to something younger, hotter, and richer. <laughs> Let's talk about it and more. It's time for Hot Topics. You know, asking about vacation time has never been the first thing that I've done in any job in all of my life. Like when I was in radio, I, I did it because I loved the game. And I would never say, how much vacation time do I have? Same thing with this TV show. So when we have to go on vacation, like I'm good for three days. After that, I miss you so much. I, I do. And, and you know, I have the Twitter and I have the Facebook. And when news blows up or when there's a thought that I want to share with you, I say, well, let me take to Twitter. And then I'm like, never mind, because I'm more of an emotional talker. So I like to uh, talk to you through the TV and, like, you know, my co host, my studio audience. I'm just not. Anyway, eh. So much happened, though, while we were gone. Um, and then last night, it was all about getting as much rest as I can, even though TV is so juicy on Sunday nights, <laughs> to be here. But I'll tell you what. I discovered, first of all, me and my guys, we had gone away. We chased the sun for a moment. We went away to the islands. Um, and then we came back. And one of the things about having a vacation, what, from vacation, is that you get a chance to regroup and get your house back together. And I did a lot of TV watching, and I discovered two new shows that you guys... <clears throat> one of them was a slip to me from Andy Cohen over at Bravo. It's called Married to Medicine. Oh, my gosh. You've only seen the commercials. You've never seen a full episode, but I did. And let me just say... I am so watching Married to Medicine. It's about doctors. It's not, all right, first of all, it takes place in Atlanta. They're like five women. And like three of the women are real doctors themselves. And they wear Prada, Gucci, and drive Mercedes. And, <laughs> and, they, and they do their hair weaves and they talk about trivial mess that we love on our reality shows, except they don't have trivial jobs. The other two are like married to really prominent doctors. You know, the kinds of doctors where you have like um, statues in the backyard and you don't have shrubs. You have topiary plants and things like that at your house. So anyway, Married to Medicine, which uh, starts on Bravo on Sunday, March 24th Woo! at 9 o'clock. Now, currently the show occupying 9 o'clock on Sundays is Shaw's a Sunset, but that's about to go away for the season, so then Married to Medicine is going to start. And then the other show that I got turned on to that I, I'm begging you guys, please watch it, because already I'm hearing that it might be canceled. But, well, people are saying it's not so good, but I like Red Widow. There, I said it. <laughs> Okay, this show, I, I couldn't tell whether it was really bad or really good when I first watched it. <laughs> or really stupid or what. Okay, so the second episode la aired last night, so it's not too late for you to get into it. It's about this, this, um, this uh, Russian drug family, this like Russian mafia family, and it takes place in San Francisco. And so the husband of the main character gets killed, and so then she goes from being a housewife to being a bad guy. <laughs> So ridiculously unreal. She's chasing, <laughs> look, she's ch chasing large volumes of cocaine coming in containers <laughs> off the coast of wherever. In the meantime, in between the chases, she's calling home to make sure her kids have done their homework <laughs> and eaten their bed. It's like so stupid, but it's good. Red Widows, everybody, at Air Red Widow. <laughs> Sunday night at 10 on ABC. And then it's, it's so good. Like, I made dinner really early last night because I wanted to be able to watch as much of all four hours of Donald Trump occupying NBC <laughs> with a Celebrity Apprentice as possible. <laughs> and I don't know what you normally do on Sunday nights, but for me, I like to touch up my fingernails. So this is what I did during Celebrity Apprentice. <laughs> Um, all right, and um, all right. So last week, you remember, uh, Brett Michaels was fired, and last night it was Dee Snyder who was fi fired. But the most distracting thing to me on both nights so far this season is how beautiful Latoya Jackson's hair system looks. <laughs> Latoya, girl, I don't know whether that's a wig or a weave or extensions or what. All I'm saying is that your hair has got it going on. And then Dee, by the way, who was fired last night, is going to be on our show tomorrow. So I look forward to catching up with Dee Snyder. Yeah. In the meantime, over at The View, major drama. You guys all heard Joy Behar? She's out. Well, she announced she was leaving. So, you know, a lot of times people assume that, you know, leaving is 
politically correct for you were fired. But you know what? She'd been talking about it for a moment here and there behind the scenes. And you know, it was an open secret. So she's leaving after 16 years. I think her last uh, date with The View is August, August, right, you guys? Uh -huh. That's how you can tell she's leaving and she wasn't fired. You know what I mean? And, and you could tell that she was, she's leaving on friendly terms, because only on friendly terms do you, are you allowed to stay around till August, <laughs> um, when it's only March. Um, anyway, so, but good luck to Joy. You know, Joy is 70 years old. Oh. The spirit of a 63-year-old, right? She's 70 years old, and you know what? She comes from radio. I remember I used to listen to Joy. Joy, you know this. Um, I used to listen to Joy on a regular basis here in New York. I thought that she was smart and insightful, and when she got the view, I said, wow, good for her. She turned something that could have been six minutes, if she was terrible at it, into 16 full years. And not only that... She got the job when she's past her spending years and more into the smart years. You know how, like, if you get a little money when you're a little bit older, you're not running out and, like, buying all kinds of stupid mess? I mean, her daughter's already grown. When she got The View 16 years ago, she was probably already through the spending years, so she didn't care about moving on up to another apartment or whatever. She had her boyfriend, Steve, who's now her husband. Life is good for Joy Behar at 70 years old. Are you kidding me? Plus, she hosts her own television show on current TV. And even if she never does anything else except for that, Joy, Congratulations, you left the way people should live. On top. So Joy left, I can't say the same thing for uh, Hasselbeck. Uh, Us Weekly is reporting that she's being kicked off, allegedly. <laughs> Thing. Allegedly, Elizabeth Hasselbeck is being kicked off The View because she isn't popular with the audience who thinks she's too right-wing. Well, you know what? I'm part of The View audience. We knew that she was right-wing when, when she first landed on the show. <laughs> so why are you all of a sudden getting new on Hasselbeck after 10 years of her being on The View? By the way, that was a fluke, too. That was like 10 minutes of fame that she really turned into something good because, you know, she was a reality star and that housewife thing and, and married to the football player who makes plenty of money, so don't, you know, cry for, for uh, Hasselbeck. And then, you know, she's gluten-free and all that stuff. <laughs> anyway. Here's my, here's my thought, though, with Hasselbeck. And you know what? Even though you're being, um, they say you're being kicked off the show, Hasselbeck, you'll be fine because you can take your right-wingness and go to one of the cable uh, news shows and host it, and it'll be just fine. I don't really think it's that she's right-wing, though, because I think that whoever they replace her with also needs to have a pretty strong political opinion. My thing about Hasselbeck, and, you know, Elizabeth, you and I have met before, and I... The thing about her is, is that she takes her opinion and she shoves it down your throat. So therefore, you, you don't have any wiggle room to have your own opinion. You know me, I'm opinionated too. But I love everybody else to have their own opinion. And so there's no word on who's going to be replacing either one of the ladies, but the Star Magazine is reporting. Brooke Shields for Hasselbeck. Oh. What do you mean? Oh. And I'll tell you why. First of all, we already know Brooke. Now, you know, as a, I do daytime TV, but I'm also a watcher, I'm a fan. Like, I just happen to have a job where I was already watching anyway. Um, when I turn on my daytime TV, I like familiar faces. I like to, you know, get to know somebody, and then I like them to be a part of my household. So, uh, being that Hasselbeck and, and um, Behar are leaving, Brooke Shields has been in our household since Blue Lagoon and Calvin Klein. We also know that she can say it like she means it. Remember when she fought uh, Tom Cruise over the whole... Um, post-pregnancy thing. <laughs> she's, and she's 47 years old. She's a mom. And then we're familiar with Brooke. I like her. And then the one to go in the comedic chair for uh, Behar, they're saying Allie Wentworth. Yeah. I think that's perfect. <laughs> Allie's been here a couple of times. You know she's married to George Stephanopoulos. Um, and, and so that means, you know, she's got a political opinion. She's from a very, very um, well-appointed Washington, D.C. Beltway family. She's a very smart girl, but she knows how to get down and dirty. I bet you she knows how to drink a boiler maker and wipe her mouth with, <laughs> you know, like, I, you know, she's just fun. I think those are two really good choices, Barbara Walters. By the way, Barbara, the Daily News, I hear, is reporting that you are, go are considering stepping down at, at the end of this year. And we like Barbara, but, you know, Barbara can either stay and go or stay and, and um, 
you know, how she's sometimes the guest on her own show. She's not there all the time. <laughs> but Barbara's 83 years old. So who do you think should replace Barbara? Well, go to my Facebook page and tell me who you think should replace her. I have not plugged in any names, but I can tell you who doesn't need to replace her. <laughs> okay, you don't have to force a minority. You already have Whoopi and Sherry. If I, I mean, you don't have to, you know what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> Some of the white girls in the audience are laughing. But, but you know, do you know lady in the front row with the beautiful beige jacket? Do you know sometimes, sometimes what TV does is they'll try to just plug in a minority person just to make the minorities happy. And we can tell when that happens and it doesn't really work. So you don't have to replace with a black or an Asian or Hispanic, but what you, and oh, you also don't have to replace with an octogenarian. <laughs> it's not necessary to be 180 years old to, to be, you know, in the barber spot. I, I can't think, but help me, uh, go to my Facebook page and I'll give you opinions tomorrow and uh, I'll report back what you say as well. Tornella. Uh, Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore. Okay, with no children, six years of marriage, they, uh, they split up in 2011. Demi has finally filed for divorce. Well, I must tell you. If, if you're like me, if you're like me, you're saying, Wendy, didn't you already report this story? I know, I know. No, it was Ashton who we reported. He filed for divorce from her back in December, a few months ago. Demi is finally counterfiling the divorce and she's going after Ashton's money. She's demanding spousal support and attorney's fees to be paid uh, um, to get him back for allegedly cheating on her. There was a man who led the clap. <laughs> uh, um, but look, um, here's the thing. Reportedly, Demi is worth $150 million and Ashton is worth $140 million. Well, um, Demi is, first of all, I think that this is absolutely ridiculous that this, this divorce, six years of marriage, that means you did put in your time and your work, but you married a man who was 27 years old. What did you think was going to happen? <laughs> Number one. Number two, there's nothing to really divide. If everybody's wealthy, even if they have property, just cut it down the middle or just, just figure it out. Demi, I'll tell you what you're doing. You're adding more lines and wrinkles and years to your life by dragging this out. No, she should have just signed off on it. Hello, when you get a particular age, you realize you gotta let go. There's just, when you get to be a particular age, um, whatever age that would be for you, and depending on your health, you really do have to let go of some of the things that are holding your, uh, blocking your blessings and holding your life back. To me, let go of the spousal support. You don't need spousal supporting, number one. And number two, yeah, Ashton should pay the attorney's fees, but if after 90 days he hasn't paid them, then write a check, girl. <laughs> hey! I just believe that. I, I believe that. Even sometimes you have to suffer personally by letting go of the baggage in your life. Just let it go and rebuild and understand you're a healthier, better person for it. By the way, Demi. <laughs> so I'm reading while we're on hiatus. I so badly wanted to Twitter you guys, only I told you I can't do my emotions through the Twitter, so I saved it for now. <laughs> so I was reading while we were on vacation and I was laying around the pool with my pool wig. By the way, <laughs> I was gonna tweet you a picture, but whenever we go someplace, I never get phone service because I don't care to talk to anybody back home. So I, nothing was working to do anything. It's white hot blonde and big and long. <laughs> look, look, and I sit on the beach reading all my tabloids with my horn rim studded glasses and really bright pink lipstick <laughs> and a whole lot of jewelry. Like if I jump in the pool, I'm gonna <laughs> drown. <laughs> I'm the lady that when you're on vacation and you look up, you say, who the hell does she think she is? <laughs> a hardworking woman from Jersey who just wants to have fun with her Kevins in the sun. <laughs> So Demi, I'm reading around the pool with all my outfit on. Demi reportedly is still dating that restaurateur, Harry Morton. Now I gotta tell you something. Harry is like, you know, in his 20s as well. Uh, but the star is reporting that 
Demi's oldest daughter, Rumor, hooked up with Harry back in 2007. Oh. Yes! <laughs> Rumor Willis, the oldest daughter of Bruce and Demi, hooked up with Harry for a fling. Now, you have to understand, back in 2007, Rumor was probably only about 18 years old herself. You remember when you were 18 and every fling mattered, everything ended in tears, and if you had a mom cool enough to go to and share your heartache, then you did. Rumor goes to Demi and says, the boy broke my heart. Fast forward to 2013, Demi, is dating Harry. Oh. How do you think this makes her older daughter feel? Well, according to the star, not so good. But Demi is going forward with her plans, which is why, you know what, Demi? Nothing good's going to come to your personal life until you let go of Ashton, get right with your daughters, get right in your headspace, and then come back out swinging. Okay. And so then another thing that I was reading when I was on vacation, this Mark Anthony, he's got a new girlfriend, and she's young. She's not as hot as J-Lo, but with enough money, she can do it. She's only 22 years old. Look, her name is Chloe, and she's a former British reality show star. Uh-uh, that's not impressive. The impressive part is that her father is a billionaire businessman who owns the top shop clothing stores. Chloe and Mark took their five-year-old twins with, with uh, Jennifer, uh, those two, look, to Disneyland. Oh. Can you imagine if you're Jennifer and you open the tabs and you see, oh my gosh, she, he is now with a formidable threat or whatever. According to the National Enquirer, they say that uh, Jennifer is furious about Mark's new relationship because she feels that he has one-upped her. <laughs> See, this, this, these two crazy people, no mind you, uh, how many more years did I say they'd get back together, Mark and Jennifer? Seven. They'll get back together seven years. They're so into one-upping each other. And Casper, you know, yes, he's young and he's your background dancer, Jennifer, but you know what? <laughs> Chloe is younger. <laughs> and, and rich. <laughs> Chloe's still young enough to have a whole nother family that Mark and she can invent. Well, I'm just saying, if you think about divorce and how people go through it, you know, then you want to see who's one-upping who. I mean, Mark and Chloe have, uh, they are 22 years in age apart, whereas um, Jennifer and Casper are 18 years. So, so far, the winner is Mark. <laughs> anyway, look, <laughs> we've got a great show for you, everybody. Essa Patha Merkerson is here. We know her for many years. Megan Good's mom on the hit show, Deception. Plus, the girl group, The Saturdays, are here. They star in their own reality show, I know! And they're gonna perform their uh, hit song, What About Us? But up next, Chloe Milos from Holly, um, HollywoodLife.com is gonna come out and join us with the inside scoop on the engagement drama between Miley and Liam. Ooh. Don't go far. comes to fitness. You can do it. Woo! Wendy's up for anything. Let's get our beans. Yep. You didn't think I was doing that, did you? Well, almost anything. Tomorrow on Wendy. Fitness expert Jillian Michaels comes to the couch. She's revealing the secrets to all her favorite workouts. It's gonna be good. Wendy Williams is brought to you by Frontline Plus, the vet's number one choice of flea and tick killer.